If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love going to the thrift store and taking items that someone did not need or want anymore and recreating them into a whole new way. And sometimes all it needs is just a little bit of paint somewhere. Today, I have several super fun mason jar crafts you are going to love. Every time I go to the thrift store, I know there's going to be several shelves with tons of mason jar style jars and I love it. I love crafting with them. I love using them from home decor, whether it's also for organization, the possibilities are endless. These two mason jars I thrifted at my local thrift store and I'm just going to give them two quick coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a lighter blue and a darker blue. I am going to use my chalk paint brush because sometimes it just works so much better. And I'm going to do a sideway motion on the uh, brushing because that way it's just going to be so much easier and smoother. For the second coat, just be very careful and do it very dry brush so that you don't remove the first coat. To decorate it, I'm just going to add some very simple boxwood that I've already had on hand. And for this one, we're just going to add some cotton stems that I already had on hand from Dollar Tree. Very simple, very country. I'm also going to add boxwood to the second one and a white, very dainty sunflower that I already had on hand just to complement each other but look a little different. And I think these are so fun. You can use any color you want. You can even distress them. I decided not to distress these, but you can take a wet rag and distress them beautifully. For the next mason jar craft, I am going to start with some tissue paper. I'm just going to tear it into smaller pieces. You don't have to cut them with scissors. Just tearing them is sufficient. We are going to take this jar. Now, it looks like a mason jar. You can use a mason jar, but this is actually a pasta jar. I'm sure you have them in your home all the time as well. I'm going to Mod Podge some of this uh, tissue paper all over. Now, you don't need to look for smoothness or perfection because truly, the more wrinkles, the better so we're just going to start applying mod podge and tissue paper making it look very wrinkly and we're going to keep applying it until the entire jar is covered I let this one dry overnight because it just had a ton of Mod Podge, but it looked all that texture. And we're gonna start painting it now. We're gonna use Waverly Chalk Bin in the Agave Tone, which is a beautiful teal color, like a bluish teal color. I love this one, especially for summer. And I'm just gonna start painting it. One pretty heavy coat to make sure all the nooks and crannies are covered with paint. And of course, we're going to let it fully dry. And then we are going to seal it. We're going to seal it. I'm going to use a Rust-Oleum sealer top coat that I had. It has a matte finish, but that's what I want it. If you want one that has more of a sheen or a glossy, just use whatever you have on hand. Look how beautiful this texture is looking. So this is the top coat I was mentioning. I'm going to do a pretty heavy coat, making sure that it falls on all the nooks and crannies and then let it fully dry. It's looking so good. All right, so now we're going to bring some white wax. I'm using Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in the white. You can use whatever wax you want. And I'm just going to start taking a little bit on a little piece of rag and just start rubbing it all over the mason jar. This is going to allow all that texture to really pop. And I'm just going to apply and remove as needed. And it's just going to stay where it needs to stay. And I'm going to do it all over the jar. And that's pretty much it for this one. I'm just gonna add a beautiful yellow sunflower to this one because I think it just pops with that blue. Perfect for spring and summer and I think it's gorgeous. I absolutely love the texture that it has. For the next mason jar craft, I am going to start with some jute string. We are going to take eight super long strips these are about four to four and a half feet long. And if you have a larger mason jar, the jar I'm going to use is not a, 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 a mason jar per se, at least in size. So while mine's a little smaller, but if you have a bigger one, you're just going to probably need more longer length of jute string. So now I'm going to take the pieces and I'm going to just start placing them and kind of fold them in half. And I'm going to put them in sets of two. And then I'm going to start placing them and you're going to see it. This is better to see than to hear me, but I'm going to try my best to explain it. So I'm just going to start looping them 
one on top of each other, just like you see here. You see what I'm doing? And then I'm gonna start threading the loose pieces through the loop of the one that is on top of it. And again, just watch what I'm doing, it's much easier. And I'm gonna do that to all the sides. So I'm gonna loop this one through that loop, and then I'm gonna thread the other one for the other loop, and I'm gonna do that until all of them are threaded through that. We're gonna create a nice tight knot in the center as we start pooling. And you're gonna see me here pooling little by little, section by section, until they're all tightened in the center. And I'm gonna give you a quick close up so that you see kind of what it looks like. So it gives you a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now that I have them nice and joined, I am going to take two strings at a time. It doesn't matter which ones, they just have to be next to each other. Once I have two of them, I'm gonna knot them, a very simple knot, leaving about an inch to an inch and a half from the bottom. That's it, that simple. And I'm gonna do that all around. Friends, I would love to connect with you on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. If you are on those platforms, make sure to check out the description box. I have the links down below for you to check out. So I am going to continue to do that all around until all that first row is knotted to each other. And this is kind of what it should look like. You have the knot in the center and then knots all around about an inch to an inch and a half on top. Now I'm going to take two strings next to each other. So one string from each bundle and tie them again, leaving an inch to an inch and a half. And I am going to do that all around. What we are essentially creating is like a net. And I'm sure you've seen this before, but I remember when I first saw it, I was like, whoa, I have to do watch this again. So I wanna make sure I go slow enough that you can catch what I'm doing, but also not too slow where you're just bored out of your mind. So I'm just gonna do that over and over again until I have enough to cover about two thirds of my jar. Then I'm gonna place the jar right inside. And then I'm gonna kind of pull up just a little bit just to kind of see where I'm at and if I need to do any more knots. So depending on how big your jar is, you may have to go a little higher with knots. But this one works for mine. So I'm just gonna place a jar in there and I'm going to start doing the same thing, but now with the jar in place. And that way I know exactly how high I need to go. And I'll do that all around once again. And then I am going to pull all the juice strings together on the top. And then that way it's just gonna give me an idea of what everything is looking like. And I love the way this is looking like. So now we are going to take a couple of them again, join them together. And this one, I'm gonna take four juice strings and I'm going to knot them. And then I'm gonna take four more until I have all of them knotted. And then I'm gonna make one giant knot with all the juice strings right on top. And that's where we can hang it from. And that's it for this one. You can add a faux candle to the jar. You can also add greenery just like I did here or seasonal flowers to make it very seasonal for every season. And I love this one. It's definitely one of my favorites. I'm gonna take this mason jar that I thrifted for 99 cents a while ago actually. I'm gonna remove the price tag and wipe it down really well. And then I am going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Vein in the Serenity Blue, which is a beautiful light blue color. And here's what the jar looks like. That color is stunning. I am going to now cut a strip of the brown faux leather. It's gonna be at about an inch. And I thought I can do it by just using my scissors, but I could not cut in a straight line. So once I had it cut to the length I needed, I used my rotary cutter and my cutting mat and that worked. So now that we have a straight strip of faux leather, we are going to hot glue starting in the middle. And if you can tell, I am really tightening the faux leather because I wanna see the ridges from the mason jar. There's something about seeing that through the leather that I really liked. So I am making sure that as I'm hot gluing, I am also pulling on the strip of faux leather to ensure that I can see those ridges. About done with this one and we're just gonna cut the excess and I think this mason jar is one of my favorites such a simple DIY but boy did that leather strap give it a beautiful high-end look I absolutely love it
I'm going to take this jar. This one is from Dollar Tree, but if you have a mason jar, you can totally do it with a mason jar. I'm going to take the cap and I'm just going to hot glue as well as use 6,000 to hot glue a glass knob that I get these on Amazon all the time, but sometimes you can find them at hardware stores or any store where they would find knobs. I'm just going to glue it right on top of the cap, just like that. Now it so happened that this one was silver and it worked out well, but if you have any other color, you can spray paint the caps any color you want. I'm going to take one of these Dollar Tree decals as number four. Don't ask me why I use number four. I have no clue, <laughs> but I think maybe it's because there are four of us in my family. Who knows? I'm going to place it in the front and I'm going to place it towards the bottom right. That's it. So simple. I'm also going to take some of this jute string and wrap it around the top. This is so such an easy DIY. Anyone can do it. After I have it wrapped around, I'm just going to make a very simple knot in the front. I know you love watching video tutorials, but if you love reading a written format of my videos, I have a blog perfect for you. And I have the link down below in the description box. I post every single week and I would love to connect with you as well there. So check it out. It is linked below. We are just about done with this one. I'm just going to cut off the excess jute string. I'm going to place that cap right in front. And also don't forget, you can also use any decal from Dollar Tree, any other sticker you want to the front, or just leave it without anything. Look how stunning this looks. Oh, this could be used in the kitchen. This could be used in the bathroom. This could be used in any part of your home. And I love the simplicity and how quick and easy this was. Anyone can do this. You can do this. You can do any of these. But let me know which one is your favorite. I cannot choose, ever choose. But let me know. I do have another video here for you. Check it out. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye. Bye.